Hello, everyone. This is Hedge Pig. Welcome uh, into my stream. Hello, Packer. Uh, good to see you coming here. This is the ever famous Pink Pig, and she is uh, she is uh, here to cheer us on. Um, my name is Hedge Pig, and I do a cooking stream that is. 14 months. Sorry, very Where does distracted. The time go? I'm looking back and forth and delay is getting me. Um, let's see. Oh, we got a subscriber, even if it is my mod. So we get a pink pig. Yay, pink pig. Yay, pink pig. Pink pig. Yay. Uh, thank you for your continued support, honey. And uh, <laughs> thank you for coming, Packer. Um, as you know, I do cooking streams where I teach people family recipes and my own recipes. And uh, I also take requests from people through my Discord if they want to see something in particular cooked. And today I will be uh, making deviled eggs. And not just any deviled eggs. I will be making the classic deviled egg, but I will also be making what I call sushi deviled eggs, which have several components of sushi in it, including uh, pickled ginger and uh, caviar and wasabi paste, which I don't have because I forgot to ask for it. So I need to have my husband get me that. And... Um, I will also be making smoked salmon deviled eggs, and uh, I am missing a component of that too, but that's not because I didn't ask for it, it's because my Amazon overlords did not deliver it, so um, that will be something that uh, we will just have to substitute out, but that's okay. So. The first thing I am going to do is make your classic deviled eggs. And deviled eggs are traditionally a hard-boiled chicken egg. Could make them with duck eggs if you want. They would be larger. They would be a lot richer. They would be very yummy. And um, you would hard-boil them. And then you... Um, would cut them in half and you mix up the yolk with various different ingredients and uh, it usually has mustard in it and some form of heat usually in the form of pepper or cayenne so there's your deviled part now uh, if you don't know how to get your egg boiled correctly you're going to end up with that weird green ring that goes around the um, yolk if you overcook your egg. Now, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a little unsightly, and it puts the color off of your egg a bit, but it doesn't do anything really to the taste. Uh, what you need to do, and my uh, recipes that I will put up on my Discord under stream recipes, will tell you exactly how to boil each different size of egg. What we did for these, because these are large eggs, we took and put the eggs in cold water that were covered an inch over the top of the egg and put them on medium high heat on the stove and brought them to a full rolling boil and at that point you turn off the heat and take the eggs off the heat and put a cover on them and you let them sit for 15 minutes if you do that your eggs when they start to cool after the 15 minutes you take and Put them in cold water or you can even put them in ice water if you need them quickly and when you peel them and cut them in half the yolks will be sunny yellow all the way through with no green ring that green ring only shows up if they're overcooked so that's not really that huge of a of a thing um as a matter of fact when you mix them all up it really doesn't do anything to the looks of the egg at all um, because the green isn't strong enough to actually tint the yolks. Okay, so I pre-boiled the eggs. And um, another little secret about deviled eggs is um, you don't want to make 
the eggs out of uh, eggs that you just bought from the grocery store. Fresh eggs are awful to peel. Even if you're doing your very best, you end up with something that looks like this uh, because the membrane clings to the egg and it, it just tears the egg up. And that's if the egg is new. At best, you're going to end up with a couple divots in your egg like this has. And um, it's just unavoidable. You want to have eggs that are two, maybe three weeks old. And at that point, use your old eggs if you're going to do this. But if you if you have to uh, buy eggs um, for, say, a party or people are going to come over, you want to do something that you have really pretty deviled eggs, buy the eggs in advance by at least two weeks. And then you'll have a much easier time peeling your eggs. Uh, let's see. So I am going to start with the plain deviled eggs, the classic ones, and you take and you cut your egg in half like this. And as you can see, there is no green ring on this. It's just a pure sunny yellow all the way through. And that's how you know that you didn't overcook your egg. Uh, I have times for different eggs depending on the size of the eggs. Then you just kind of carefully tip them into a bowl and then set them aside. And I am going to put them on a platter for now and again for later. And you just continue cutting your eggs. And you do it kind of carefully because they are a little sticky and you don't want to break your eggs. Um, gently tip it out. Let go. There you go. Now, the one really nice thing about deviled eggs when you go to fill them, if you make a mistake on how you're filling it, if you overfill it or underfill it, you can just start again. It's easy. Um, I have got 16 eggs here. I was trying to make 18, but they started looking like a shark had chewed on them, and they aren't really good for filling at that point. They're really good for uh, egg salad, <laughs> so you don't have to look at them. Um, deviled eggs were always a treat food in my family. Um, they're enough of a pain in the neck when you're working full-time and uh, busy with everything that, you know, you leave them for something that's more of a special occasion, or at least they were in my house. They were at uh, Thanksgiving. We would make these as one of the appetizers before the meal, or we would use them um, at Christmas, um, or if we were having somebody come over for, you know, company come over for something. We didn't entertain a lot. It was mostly holidays. Um, family and that was when we did most of our fancy cooking uh, like appetizers so I have a soft spot in my heart for appetizers um, they're really great not only for um, you know a night in with your significant other a family celebration a gathering of friends or you know maybe just you and one friend and you make a whole meal out of you know three or four appetizers just different kinds and um that can be fun too so right, one two three four got four eggs now i'm gonna do five of each kind uh the recipes when i put them in my stream uh we will be giving the recipe by a dozen eggs so you'll have to divide them appropriately. So if you have only six eggs you want to cook because you don't want to have 24 deviled eggs, although I can't really imagine that because who doesn't love deviled eggs, um, you then just divide it by however many eggs that you want to do. If you want to do six, cut the recipe in half and egg yolk is clinging to the inside of the egg white. That's special. Okay. So that is five. All right. Now in your classic deviled egg, what you have is the egg yolks. And we take a paper towel to get the egg yolk off my fingers. Okay. 
it. And I am going to take a fork and you just kind of lightly mash the egg yolks up. You're just kind of breaking them up enough so that they're a little easier to mix in with the other ingredients you put in it. And deviled eggs are so customizable. It's just incredible all the different things you can do with them instead of just, you know, having them plain eggs. So it doesn't take very long to do this. Then you want to take a couple dashes of salt. And this is uh, sea salt. And it's just a little bit of salt in that. And then you want to take a little bit of pepper. You don't really want to discolor it with dark pepper. This is a fairly fine grind, so you don't really see it. And get that a little bit of a mix. And then you want to take mayonnaise. And the mayonnaise you can use between a teaspoon and a tablespoon of the egg and of the mayonnaise in measurement. Um, I usually use a tablespoon. So for uh, a dozen eggs, it's about six tablespoons of mayonnaise. This is roughly half that, so it's not going to be anywhere near as many. I have a tiny little spatula here that's absolutely available. It will help get the mayonnaise out of here. So that is one. And since this is half, I'm going to be using about half the mayonnaise, about three tablespoons. I'm going to start mixing it, however, at two. Because what you're looking for is a certain consistency in the egg yolks. And that is about the consistency of frosting. So it's it's not really mushy. Um, but what you're looking at is something that is uh, smooth and creamy without being just drowned in mayonnaise. So yeah, this is going to be about three tablespoons. And I use uh, yellow mustard in it by choice. And that is about a half teaspoon. Because you don't really need a ton of yellow mustard. And I suggest you use a jar because these squeeze things can get kind of aggressive with you. I'm going to go there. And I'll use my little squeegee. You can use Dijon if you really prefer the taste of that, but for a classic deviled egg, it's just prepared yellow mustard, which is like French's or um, it's just called yellow mustard really in stores. So, and I am going to use another tablespoon of mayonnaise. These are a little bit heaped. If you were being really strict about it, you would have uh, used the side of this to level it off flat like that, and then discarded the rest back into the container. And I'll continue mixing this up until it is a smooth consistency, because that's really what you want. Now, if you were going to be doing a whole lot of these eggs, if you were going to be doing like a couple dozen uh, for a big party, uh, you'd probably want to use uh, a mixer for it, uh, either a hand mixer, um, or if you have a stand mixer, using a stand mixer, and then you'd get absolutely all the lumps out of it, and it'd be nice and airy and uh, fluffy. But this is a little more rustic and a lot easier, honestly. Okay, so I have got this now all contained, and I am going to put that off its side. I need to get the knees off. And then I will scoop this around again. 
And you can, um, there's a couple different ways to get your egg stuffing, your yolks in back into the whites of your egg. And you can either use a spoon and just sort of take a little bit and dap it in there. Or you can put them in a plastic bag and snip the corner off of one end. And then you can use it to squeeze it in there like it's a pastry bag. Or if you have a, the absolute delight of kitchen gadgets, you can get an actual um, uh, you can get an actual uh, pastry bag, or you can also get something like this, which is a uh, called a decorator gun, and it is from a company called Pampered Chef. They have very high quality kitchen gadgets that uh, you can spend a lot of money on and fill all of your kitchen drawers with, and you'll have a lot of fun with them. Um, they do make your life a little bit easier, but um they also aren't strictly speaking necessary so i'm going to use this to decorate the eggs and i'm going to carefully fill my egg gun with it decorator gun and they come with about eight or nine different uh ends on it i chose one that looks like this it has uh, little things and it's going to come out like this lovely little scalloped uh, egg in, in filling so it'll be nice and pretty which is kind of what I'm going for here um, honestly most of the time I just use a spoon because <laughs> more concerned about eating the eggs and how pretty they are but since I'm assuming that you might want to know how to decorate them for a party I'm going to use my decorator gun. Okay. So just smoothing it in so that it actually fits there. And I will move this off to one side. Middle, and then you put the lid on here. You put the tip on that you want to put on next, and then it has a ring that goes with it. And you bring your eggs back in to be filled. And I'm going to do them a couple eggs at a time. And the neat thing about this is you set this to the point where it will uh, push down your ingredients. And then the little trigger that they have here is what actually pushes it forward. So you take your egg and hold it in one hand gently. And then you use this little egg filling thing. And you just twirl the egg around and around. And you end up with a pretty little scalloped shaped egg filling. And I'm going to put that back down here. And classically, you would see somebody top these with uh, either um, some paprika. It is pretty classic. It's uh, A nice neutrally flavored adds a little bit of zing to the eggs. Uh, some people put cayenne pepper on it because they want the eggs to be a little spicy. And that's really nice as well. Um, some people add in some chopped uh, chives or something to put on the top to make it look pretty. This is not pushing down right here. There we go. Haven't used this thing in years. So. And you just keep going. 
until you're out of eggs. And as you see, this makes pretty little uh, fancy looking eggs. I think I actually overfilled a few, but that's okay. Now, because Andrew doesn't like cayenne pepper, I'm not going to put the cayenne on these. But I think I have enough for one more egg. These don't have to be really heaped up. They just have to be yeah, close to level. They taste good no matter what you do. So, uh, And then you can just add more customizations to it. Um, if, for instance, you want to make these a little extra savory, if you have some bacon fiends in your family like I do, you could take... Um, bacon and you fry it crispy. I'm going to add a little bit more to this one because it looks like it's a little lacking. Okay. And if you want to make them a little extra special, I've got some, I'm allergic to bacon, so I don't handle real bacon. <laughs> And what I have got here is some um, uh, bacon pieces. It's made by McCormick's. It is uh, vegan, actually. It is textured soy protein that, I don't know, they taste a little like bacon, I guess. And they have a smoky flavor. They have a nice little crunch. You would take your regular bacon. You would fry it until it's nice and crisp. And then you would cut it up into small pieces. And what you have then is a little bacon and egg egg. And I'll put that to the side. I'll make myself another one. I'll choose that one. We just sprinkle the little bacon bits on it. You can make it a little more colorful by adding some parsley to it uh, on top, or you could add little chives that would also taste good. So there we have another little bacon and egg. And then here is our regular egg. You can see how nice the little decorator makes them look that is our classic deviled egg and a bacon and egg deviled egg all right the next one we're going to make is the fishy deviled egg No, you don't have to eat the eggs with the pinkies out. You can be you can be as savage as you want, darling, and just stuff them in your mouth if you want. Okay. Now I call these sushi deviled eggs because they have some of the components of sushi in them. Uh, they have pickled ginger, and I like the pink pickled ginger just because it's pretty. But this is white. Uh, they were out of pink, uh, so I got the white ginger. And it comes with wasabi paste, which you can either get it as wasabi powder and add your own liquids to it to make it uh, the paste. Or you can buy it like this, where it comes in a tube. It's very easy to measure out then. And it comes in a little tube. And it's got a little tricky trap top. And you put this in the place of mustard, but um, 
you have to be real careful. Um, you can add more or less to this, depending on how spicy you like your deviled eggs. And uh, I tend to like wasabi, so I add I add more wasabi to these than perhaps some people would like. And I'm just removing the protected top it has on it. So it comes in a little tube like this. And then for the other decoration, it's going to have a uh, caviar on top of it. And um, this is the recipe calls for lumpfish. Pardon me, not lumpfish. It calls for uh, tobiko, which is a flying fish roe. And that means caviar. And uh, they're very, very small eggs. Your sturgeon caviar is what most people think of when they think of caviar. And it is much larger than these little babies. Um, Tobiko comes in, uh, they can dye it black. Uh, they can put green in it, which is actually a wasabi tobiko. And so it has that nice spice in addition to. Um, it has a nice pop because it's little eggs and it has a fishy taste to it like um, uh, anchovies does. And it can be quite intense if you have a lot, but you're not going to be adding a huge amount to it. Um, this is lumpfish caviar, which is similar. Um, it's a little bit bigger than the tobiko. Um, it comes in black or in red. The tobiko comes in black, red, orange, and yellow, and green. And it just depends on um, what you're using to dye it, uh, what color it is. So I am going to start with more eggs. And we do the same thing, boiled eggs. And we will cut them in half. And if you have any trouble with your eggs rolling around on the plate, what you do is you take a sharp blade and you cut a very thin slice off the back of the egg so you make a flat point for it. And that will keep your eggs from rolling around. So you don't you won't have them not balancing right on your plate and rolling into each other. And if that kind of thing disturbs you, then cut that little divot in the back of your egg and it'll stop that. And I am hoping with this stream, and this is this is a first stream of the year. It is the first stream in our new house. And um, I'm hoping to be doing at least one stream a week. And keep that up and hopefully move into two or more streams a week. We'll see how that goes. Um, but I'm hoping to make this a regular thing like it used to be. So we take, we're going to take five eggs. And you don't have to clean out the inside of each egg completely. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to take one of these torn up eggs <laughs> and make it out of this one too. If they get a little torn up, if it's just for the family, it's not that big of a deal. And as long as it doesn't penetrate the white completely, you can still fill them. They just aren't quite as pretty if you look at them from the back. But honestly, you're looking at the egg this way. So uh, it's not really that big of a deal, even if it does look like a shark was chewing on it from the back. Doesn't mean I didn't have a hissy fit before stream, though, because these were not peeling right. We ended up cooking 36 eggs, and I managed to get 16 that were semi-decent. So <laughs> that uh, didn't work out very well. But Andrew and I both like deviled eggs. We also like egg salad, so the eggs are not going to go to waste. And an egg salad where it's all chopped up doesn't really matter what it looks like. So I'm just using my finger to kind of gently persuade these things. You, you, you stretch gently on the egg and it loosens it. And then you just use your thumb to just tip it out. 
So that is one, two, three, four eggs. One more. Four, five. And I split that one. That's okay. And I pushed on it a little bit too hard. It's generally better to uh, try to express the egg yolk away from the thin, art, thin part so you're not putting stress on it where it's the weakest or you'll end up splitting an egg. Okay, so I have done that. My hands again. And we go back to our mayonnaise and our fork. And I'm going to start by just mashing this up a little bit. I was trying to make sure they were pretty, yes, because these are, in effect, for a party. So I wanted them to be pretty eggs. But when we moved here, uh, like a week and a half ago, it uh, we threw away most of the stuff we had. And we had either really old eggs or no eggs. And so we threw away the really old eggs. And that um, meant all of my eggs are new. So that is, I'm going to add in a couple dashes of salt. And a, and a dash is literally donk for the salt shaker. Or in the case of a salt grinder, it's about a grind. Um, it's a very small measure. You might be able to get a set that does what mine does. And I actually have measuring spoons that are a dash or a pinch. And... It's kind of interesting because in the older recipes, you find recipes that call for things like a dash and a pinch, and it's kind of cool um, to see that someone actually quantified it. So that's a dash of pepper. And now I am going to add, I didn't open this yet. Okay. Everybody has their little safety seals these days, which I guess is a good thing, but it gets kind of annoying at times when you have to remove them. Put that there. Uh, this is going to be a little different of a recipe than the standard deviled eggs. I'm getting confused over what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be the same amount. It's going to be about three tablespoons of mayonnaise. I think it was three. Okay. There is my spatula. Now for a whole dozen, I call for six tablespoons of eggs, uh, mayonnaise, to go with 12 yolks. So if you're doing around six, you're going to do three. Oh, that was messy. Now, the good thing about uh, cooking like this is that it's not really that exacting of a science. If you are worried about um, baking, baking is actually a science. Uh, the amount of salt you have to the amount of sugar, the amount of yeast you have to that, and the order you put it in with is very specific. And if you go against that, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. So I am going to start out by adding half of a teaspoon of 
wasabi. God, I hope that's actually open. No, it has plastic in it too. Well, that's special. I'll take a knife and cut it so it will actually come out. So in addition to the foil lid, this also had a plastic one. Okay. I kind of heat that up a little bit. And I will put that into that right there and start mixing it up. So this has three tablespoons of mayonnaise in it and it has the egg yolks little dash of salt, dash of pepper, and now it has a half a teaspoon of wasabi paste in it. Now this is the one uh, deviled egg that my husband is not going to try because the idea of uh, <laughs> The idea of um, eating caviar kind of turns his stomach a little. So these will be just for me, which is great because I love them. And I'm going to give this a taste to see what the wasabi level is. Hmm, not enough. I'm going to call for a little bit more. That is about the equivalent of a teaspoon of uh, wasabi paste. Um, it has a nice flavor to it that it has. If you've ever had wasabi, you're familiar with that flavor. You're also familiar with the burn. And that's also nice. So this is still fairly mild. It's not going to be anything that is offensively hot to someone. But you might want, if you're keeping this for uh, friends, you're putting this out for a party, you might want to not go over about a teaspoon at most. Now, if your friends that you're doing this for are all absolute heat meisters and they delight in things like uh, jalapenos and laugh at those and go on to the habanero and the ghost peppers, you could probably go up to two te two teaspoons and be perfectly safe. But again, uh, know your audience for your food, and you will want to um, make sure that you taste test it first to make sure it is not too hot for the people that are tasting it. Okay, so I'm going to get the mayonnaise out of the side again. And once again, I'm going to get my egg filler here. There is probably some egg left in here. Yep, in the tip. And I'm going to handle that by using my little spatula. And I'm going to mix that in with the egg yolk I already have here. Because there's not really that big of a difference between the two. So I will take and put that there. And then mix that in. And then once more take this. And these eggs are not only just freshly peeled, they're also chilled. So these were chilled for about an hour. And roll this back again. Come on. about halfway and and I would definitely do this over a table or something so that uh, or a counter because when you're doing this it's going to slop a little bit 
Hey Maverick, welcome in. You have missed the first of the deviled eggs uh, as a as a recap, the first deviled eggs were the classic deviled eggs, and they were made with, uh, the recipe will be posted, but basically it is, um, I was doing five eggs in this case, but I'm going to tell you the recipe for a dozen. So it would be 12 eggs, and you hard boil them, and then you take and put them uh, in the refrigerator to chill, you peel your eggs, and then you take the yolks and put them into a bowl and give them a little mash with a fork. And then to that, you add two dashes of salt, a dash of pepper. Uh, for the dozen eggs, you would add six tablespoons of mayonnaise and about a teaspoon of yellow mustard. And then you mix that up and you fill it um gently and i am using a pampered chef decorating gun to fill my eggs because they're pretty and i am trying to make them extra pretty for you like i would if this was a dinner party or something like that instead of just a gathering of friends which you could just use a fork these are the sushi deviled eggs and this is again uh same amount of eggs same amount of uh mayonnaise but what you want to do in this case is get uh instead of using yellow mustard in it i put in wasabi paste and now that i've got it in this little gun here it has a special decorating tip on it and then you take and just press to fill. The little decorating gun makes pretty little legs. So I got that. And this is from Pampered Chef. Like I said, it's just one of the nifty little kitchen gadgets that they have. And it is one that uh, if you do a lot of, why is that not pressing? Look at that. Hang on a second. Okay. Uh, if you do a lot of things like uh, have a lot of parties, if you want to do, um, there's a kind of cookie called a spritzed cookie. Why is this not working? Didn't have this trouble with the first of it. All right, let me try it this way. Okay. Clock, there we go. Um, if you do a lot of spritzed cookies, if you do a lot of parties where you'd be doing things like this, it's definitely worth the 20 bucks this thing cost. Apparently, I didn't get these quite smooth enough. It's having trouble expressing the eggs through the tip. There's another one. And like I said, the idea isn't to overfill these things, is to fill them about to the top. I'm not pleased with the tip on this one. normally fairly effortless. Mm. 
more like that. So this has mayonnaise and wasabi in it. It is going to have uh, some red caviar on top. And this one is made from lump fish instead of tobiko, which is what called for, but I couldn't find any tobiko. It's not really a big difference. The tobiko is a little smaller and it comes in more colors. Really, that's what the difference is. And I can now go back and fill these up more because I have more egg yolk than I was using. Anybody else needs some more? And you just keep filling them till you're out of egg yolk, basically. And I'm pretty close to being there. All right. Okay, so that is set aside. Now, a big secret about caviar. You see in the movies, people have like these little white spoons that they use on caviar. And the reason for that is if you use metal on caviar, it ruins the taste so you can't use uh you can't use um you can't you can't use metal on it or you'll ruin your caviar whether it's fairly inexpensive tobiko or lumpfish or if you've got salmon roe um or if you have um expensive caviar generally what they say if you're going to be eating caviar they use um they use special spoons made out of mother of pearl they're not horribly expensive but they are another little piece of kitchen gadgetry that really most people would never come up with i'm using wood here and if you can see these are tiny tiny little eggs and they are about the size about the size of the head of a pin and you just want to use them sparingly on top of this uh, the tiny little eggs like this are not going to be as assertive as uh, the larger caviar is it's not going to be as fishy it's not going to be as salty because you're just flat not using as much and each one of these little eggs is tiny so it's here for a little pop of uh, flavor uh, that you would have in most sushi. Um, some of the sushi rolls use tobiko, which is the point of it. And uh, this is just to add a little bit of color, which is why I chose red. And it also adds a little pop of flavor and it also adds texture because uh, when the eggs pop in your mouth, it's just this little burst uh, sensation, which is kind of interesting. I will admit caviar is a uh, acquired taste, whether that is um, expensive caviar, like the sturgeon caviars, which is what most people think of when they think of caviar. Or if you're talking, well, that was not great. Uh, if you're talking about the other kinds of caviar, like this, uh, lump fish, tobiko, um, salmon caviar, which uh, anytime my father saw it in the store, he would say looks like it escaped from the bait shop because one of his favorite baits for, for fishing was salmon eggs. Um, 
Hey, Nougat, welcome in. Uh, can we get a shout out for Nougat? He is someone that I actually have modded for. He is a variety game streamer and a very interesting um, chef from Australia. And he basically does foraging for his own food. He, he gets, you know, mushrooms and things like that and uh, wild plants that you can use. And, and uh, he does that himself, which <laughs> I find pretty darn fascinating. I'm getting this all over. Okay. So as you see, that was maybe a tablespoon of these uh, eggs maybe a teaspoon actually across all of these eggs and um it's not a lot it's just it's an accent really kind of a delicious one um so now i have got these are my sushi deviled eggs to um go back to the recipe for uh, nougat you can find my recipes on my discord under stream recipes these are what i call my sushi deviled eggs and they are they have mayonnaise in them and wasabi paste uh they call for tobiko which is flying fish roe but i couldn't find any so i used a similar size uh sushi um a similar sized uh caviar egg and that's from a lump fish and then it's also garnished. No, oh, geez. We had this open. Okay. I have got pickled ginger slices. And that's the other little bit of a thing that goes that's a bit big for one egg. Uh, I've got pickled ginger slices, and that goes with it as well. So you have three of the ingredients that go into most sushi rolls in it, which is why I call it a sushi deviled egg. You can add more ginger to it or less, depending on how you like it. The nice thing about these eggs is you can make them, uh, I would say, up to 24 hours in advance and just cover them in plastic wrap and put them in the refrigerator and pull them out when you need them. I'm... That's a really thick piece. I don't want anything that thick. Not for these. And then we just kind of drape that on here. I like the pink ginger better for appearances, but um, it's just an appearance thing. They just add, I think, beet juice or something like that to it in order to make it uh, prettier. It's just a decorative thing, really. It doesn't add any flavor at all. So there are my sushi deviled eggs. And I'll lift that up so you guys can see it. So as you can see, they're really tiny little eggs. And they're just little pinpricks, really. <laughs> You're writing them down. You can go to uh, my Discord, and if we can pop up my Discord link there. Yeah, Piglet Discord's already up. So we can, we'll have that popped up there. You can go in there and find it under Stream Recipes. And I will have all of them up after Stream. Oops. 
Sorry, that was my uh, phone alarm. And because I have been taunting everybody with these, I've been thinking about them, and I really, really want one, so I'm going to eat one right now. And this is the sushi double egg. It's so good. The egg yolk texture is very creamy. And you can taste the wasabi. Boy, howdy, can I taste the wasabi? Woohoo! That is quite a nice heat burn to it. The pickled ginger isn't in there, so it kind of cuts a little bit of the fat and it has a tanginess to it and that slight warmth that ginger has. And even with as much to, of the caviar on it as it looks like, it's just enough to kind of add a little bit of salt, a little bit of fish, and a nice pop when, it, when you bite it between your teeth. And it's just, it's just a really nice taste. Um, this would be an excellent starter if you were going to be doing a Japanese meal, if you were going to be making something like yakisoba, or if you were going to be doing teriyaki, especially if you were going to do something like rolling some sushi rolls. And I will, perhaps in a further stream down the line, show you how to do that. Mm. That is so good. All right. Now, caviar put away. We are pressing on. So I have got right here so far three different deviled eggs. I have the classic deviled eggs. I have deviled eggs with bacon on them. And then I have my sushi deviled eggs. Now I am pressing on to the last deviled egg I'm going to be making. And I'm going to look. Move that off to the side as well. I'm lo lo losing sides to put it on, but that's okay. Now, the next deviled egg is going to have smoked salmon in it. So I'm going to go ahead and change into the larger of my two uh, fluted tops. And I don't want to have the wasabi flavor in that. I don't think it would go badly with it, but I know my husband wouldn't like it. So I'm not going to use the eggs for that to mix in like I did with the last one. And I'm going to clean the wasabi deviled eggs off of my spatula so that there's no chance that taste gets into the eggs that he will like because he does not like wasabi at all. <laughs> yeah, I know it was a take my drugs one. Just going to have to wait. Okay. So our last deviled egg is, I've got a much larger tip on it because I'm going to be putting um, minced, minced smoked salmon in it. So I will take and start with the eggs again. We've got a conundrum here, honey. We're running out of space on the platter. Might have to have the husband come in and actually take a couple of the eggs away. I doubt they'll make it to the refrigerator. My husband will probably taste test them for everybody. <laughs> Is she trying to assert her claim on the smoked salmon? Yep, those are the plain ones. Alrighty then. 
I'm going to start with once again double the, the boiled eggs, cutting them in half and removing their little yolky centers. And again, I have instructions on how to boil an egg without ending up with an icky green ring on it, which means not that your egg is bad, but it, you've overcooked it. It doesn't hurt the flavor, not really. Makes the centers a little drier, but it doesn't really do anything to the flavor of it. And aside from the fact it has a green ring that everybody always goes, is the egg okay? Doesn't really harm anything. So, and I've done it by uh, size of egg, whether the egg you're using is a small, medium, large, or extra large egg. It has different times involved in those. And again, as I said, you want to use older eggs for making your boiled eggs because they just don't peel properly if they're really fresh. They, uh, the membrane seems to cling on a little too strongly between the shell and the yolks and, and the egg's innards. And uh, it makes it so it just tears the living snot out of your eggs and makes them look terrible. So I apologize for my junky looking eggs here. They, uh, they were all fresh eggs, unfortunately. And these are boiled, chilled, peeled, and now cut in half. And there we go. I'm going to move these a bit off to the side because I am going to need my cutting board for more than just mixing in this case. Now this one uses a bit different uh, ingredients. Not only does it have smoked salmon in it, but it also has uh, sour cream. It uses Dijon mustard instead of yellow mustard. And, uh, well, it also has dill. So we've got the eggs here. We have got the egg yolks here. And I'm giving them the first little startup of mashing here, trying to get the size down so I'm not having my my decorator gun have issues with lumps. It's a lovely little trip little toy to play with, but uh, you can break it quite easily if you're trying to strain something through it that is just too large for the hole. I mean, the thing is only made of, the trigger is only made of plastic, so. Okay, I've got a preliminary chop on that. I'm going to add a little pepper to it. And again, I'll give you the measurements in the recipe that I'm going to post. That's about a dash of pepper. It's going to be a couple dashes of salt. And I'm not going over with the salt on this because the salmon is a little salty as well. And what I have got here is some um, cold smoked salmon. And it is Atlantic salmon. Uh, smoked salmon is one of my husband's favorite treats. So he has claimed this for husband kind when I'm done with stream. And has been drooling about the uh, refrigerator ever since I got it in. Yeah. Um, she calls them brown eggs. Is that because the eggshells are actually brown, or is it because of the color they come out after she's done cooking them in the pork nougat? Mm -hmm. 
Ouch. All right. Oh, that smells lovely. So this is not only cooked, but it is already had the skin removed from it. It has already been pre-sliced. This is four ounces. If I was doing a whole dozen, I would definitely use all four ounces. But because I'm doing six, this is going to be only half of it. Okay. You demand, okay, uh, why don't I get more of this off of my hands so that Pink Pig doesn't incur the devoted love of our kitten because she will smell <laughs> like smoked salmon. I'm actually expecting her to come join us now that I've opened the salmon. Pink Pig, yay, it's a Pink Pig, it's a Pink Pig. Okay, I am going to ask her to come and take the salmon away, honey, because I don't want the kitten out here. She's a little savage, and she will jump on the table for things like fish. Now, as you see, I've got the salmon. They've already pre-cut it, which is kind of handy. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm hearing rapacious devouring noises so from my husband <laughs> and I am going to cut this fairly fine Smoked so salmon is a really lovely sauce. flavor to add with eggs. Uh, I have seen recipes for this that also adds, um, has mayonnaise and sour cream and lemon and capers and uh, cream cheese. And by the time they're done, it, it doesn't really have much of the egg yolk in it. So my version of this just uses sour cream and mayonnaise and a lot of salmon as well, that's kind of what you're eating, isn't it? It's, you're, you're here for the salmon. So let's be honest about that. If you're talking about a luxury item like smoked salmon, you're there for the smoked salmon. And hi, Helga. Welcome in. I'm glad to see you. You made my shirt. Nope, you get down, smudge. Apparently, he also likes smoked salmon. I think he might have to go in his cage since he just tried to eat some eggs. <laughs> he said the puppy after his own heart. No, honey, he's after your eggs. Okay, so. You need to give uh, Helga a shout out when you get back to the desk, honey, because she is also a streamer. She's one of the long dark streamers. And what I am making here is the third of the deviled eggs that I have made today. This is a smoked salmon deviled egg, which is, uh, I have made a classic deviled egg, which has mayonnaise and mustard, salt and pepper in it. And it's in a, and it's in a, it's shell. I have a classic deviled egg with bacon added into these two. I have my sushi deviled eggs that you can see here that have the little red things on top. And that is a deviled egg that is made with mayonnaise, wasabi paste, uh, salt, pepper, and then it calls for tobiko. I've got lumpfish because I couldn't get the tobiko. And that just decorates the top along with pickled ginger slices. We're out of smoked salmon. Yeah, that did, I didn't think that was going to really make it past the refrigerator. So, and I've got 
And this is a smoked salmon deviled egg. I so far have got salt, pepper, a uh, the egg yolks. I have about two ounces of smoked salmon in this because I'm only making half a dozen of these instead of the dozen the recipe calls for. And I am now going to add about a quarter teaspoon of dill. Or a really big pitch. I am very familiar with the sizes of my pinches, so I don't always go for uh, actually measuring it. I am going to put in half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Hey, Cindy, welcome in. Yeah, measuring measuring does only be really, really specific in baking because baking is more of a science. You you actually are involving science in having to have leavening agents in there. So it is very specific in that case. Uh, and then I am going to use half the quantity that I would have in mayonnaise. There it is. So in this case, it would have been uh, three tablespoons of mayonnaise if I was using all mayonnaise, but I'm also gonna be using sour cream. So for a dozen, it would be three tablespoons of mayonnaise and then three tablespoons of sour cream. This is going to be a tablespoon and a half of each. Ooh, that sounds nice. Cheddar beef burgers. Yum, yum. And, and I will get out my sour cream. Cap that and put it off inside. Oh, it's a squeeze thing. Those are always annoying. Okay. Well, that's a tablespoon. And that's roughly a half. I'm going to go a little bit over because the this has also got all those lovely uh, pieces of salmon in this. So I add that in. And now I'm going to start mixing this up. And I may have to add some more sour cream or mayonnaise to it if there's too much bulk from the salmon. So we'll see how it goes. What you're still looking for is a frosting like. Um, consistency. You don't want to have it be too thick. You don't want to have it be too chunky. So you do want it to be fairly smooth. And you definitely want to have it be well combined and loose enough that it is easily uh, pressable through my press, but not uh, so loose that it is sloppy and soppy and will just basically leak liquid all over everything. So you just combine pressing against the side of the bowl until you've got the lumps out of it, except the ones that won't press out because they're salmon. Okay. Now I am going to get out another plastic bit and paste my filling. I think it's good.
So now I am going to open up my uh, decorating gun again, pull back the plunger on it. And this is from, like I said before, this is from Pampered Chef. And they make lovely kitchen tools and kitchen gadgets that are a little pricey, but they are very high quality and they can make your cooking a lot more fun. Um, and definitely more decorative because the press on this with the, um, with the different tips give you all kinds of different options for how the item you're decorating appears. In this case, they look all nice and flowery and scalloped, and it's very pretty and fancy looking. Now, normally, uh, I would put salmon eggs on top of this. Um, it, it's just called a decorator um, because it's got tips for uh, making pressed cookies. It also has tips for decorating cakes. So... Uh, I also have one that I use when I'm filling manicotti because those big pasta tubes are just a pain to fill uh, with the meat and cheese fillings that I use. So rather than force it with a spoon uh, and get really frustrated, I just use the press. That is actually why I bought the press, not because I was going to be decorating cakes. I don't really do a lot of sweets. never really have my father was never big on them so didn't okay so that is my third item to the side now i put the much larger decorating tip on it and then i screw it down and if you don't get this tight enough when you're expressing whatever it is you put in here it will come oozing out from all directions, basically. And you just tighten it up a little bit until you get it to where it looks like it's going to start coming out. And you're pushing with this end for that. And then you have this trigger uh, that you use to actually fill these with. So, then I'm going to take and fill this doubled egg. And as you can see, it makes a very pretty scallopy fancy shape. And I will just fill the rest of these. And it fills pretty easily if you're using the right size tip for the filling. So I, I made a good choice with this one instead of leaving it to the smaller one. And you just keep filling these little doubles until they're full and you're out of egg filling, which is usually about the same time. Uh, if you use a lot of extras, like if I had put the cream cheese in here, I would have had more filling than I could really fill a deviled egg with and I'd be slopping well over onto the whites with it. We're not making the prettiest shapes, but once again, uh, you can have all kinds of fun swirling the thing around and making it look like a cupcake. Or you can finish with eggs that are a little fancier than normal and are filled fairly perfectly. I am going to top some of these with some extra dill. My husband's not crazy about dill, but it's pretty. 
So I will only do it on a couple for pictures. All right, honey, can you bring me a plate so I can now plate it up for photos? And I will have you taste one of the deviled eggs for them. It is a smoked deviled egg with a smoked salmon here. And I have already tasted one of the uh, sushi deviled eggs. And in the sushi deviled egg, that's good. So I will take, and then we'll say two of these eggs. Yes, she's overseeing it, and so is my husband. So we've got those two eggs, and then we've got the classic deviled egg, which is topped with bacon. Or as my husband persists in calling it, faken, because these are imitation bacon bits. It is topped in lies, he says. And so we have those two. And then these are the sushi deviled eggs for those who haven't seen. They have a slice of white ginger on them, white pickled ginger. And little, oh, let's see what's a pretty one. That one's kind of pretty looking. I'll put that one on the plate too. And we will have pretty much two of every kind of egg I made. And I will hand that plate away to my husband. Meanwhile, I will taste test one of these for you and do my best to describe it. Again, the egg yolk is very creamy. You can taste the uh, slight taste of the Dijon mustard in it. So it has that kind of white wine, um, tangy mustard flavor. You can taste the sour cream in it. Um, and the smoky salmon is in it with a slight touch of dill. It's a really nice bite. So if you're going to make some deviled eggs, this is a great way to do it. I am going to have my husband, he's already tasted the plain deviled eggs. They have a very classic taste to them. They are, uh, mayonnaise and yellow mustard and it tastes like an egg salad sandwich or your classic deviled egg if you were to put some cayenne pepper on it it would taste a bit more uh hot it would give a, a heat to it so here are the eggs okay honey why don't you try one of the smoked eggs that's good Why don't you try any one of these and tell them what you think of it? Creamy like last time, but uh, creamier. Creamier, yeah, and I like the salmon. Yeah, I always like the smoked salmon. So I don't know if you heard that. He said it's creamier than the last one and that uh, he likes the smoked salmon in it. <laughs> the creamier part would be the sour cream instead of just mayonnaise. So here we have got classic deviled eggs. Deviled eggs with bacon bits on it. I've had a lot of eggs today, so I'm not going to eat any more because I have to be careful of the sulfur. These are your smoked salmon deviled eggs. And I would normally put this dill on it, it's dried dill, but I would also put a few salmon eggs or smoked salmon eggs, preferably on top. It's very pretty. They look like jewels. It's absolutely amazing. And then we have my sushi deviled eggs, which has the mayonnaise and wasabi paste. It has, uh, this is lump fish caviar, but it's actually calls for tobiko, which is a similar size, but a different fish. Very similar in flavor. These are a little saltier. And then it has a slice of pickled ginger on it. So those are my three 
<laughs> I will be posting my uh, recipes after stream in the Discord, Helga. And if you haven't already joined my Discord, please join it. And you'll find it under stream recipes along with photographs of all of the recipes I've cooked on stream for you. And I will be adding in a few other options, things that you can add to this to spice your eggs up a little bit. And uh, we're going to see if we can find somebody to raid now. Let's see who we've got. Thank you all for coming. I would like to say that. And uh, let's see. Why don't we raid acidic virus? So we have got, uh, I will be seeing you. I will post my time for next week. I'm going to be making this a regular thing again now that we are in our new house. I want to thank you all for coming. It is absolutely wonderful see you, to see you all. And I hope to see you again next week. And I'm sure I'll see you in your streams. So thank you for coming.